In this lesson, we're going to be looking at perimeter, circumference, and area of different geometric shapes. So let's begin with the example here. What is the perimeter of a picture in its frame if the picture is 5 by 7 and the frame is 1 inch wide? So with all these, like many things in geometry, a sketch or diagram tends to be very helpful. So if I have a picture like such, that is a 5 by 7 and then it is surrounded by a frame that is 1 inch wide. One inch here. So perimeter by definition is the distance around the outside of an object. So what would be the total perimeter of this combined shape? Well, in order to know that, we need to know what the total dimensions are. So we start with our shape that is 5 by 7, but then we put in 1 inch frame. Many people want to quickly say, well, 1 plus 7 is 8, and 1 plus 5 is 6. But remember, this frame isn't only on the left and top, it's on the right and bottom also. So if we take this 1 inch frame and add it to the 7 inches on both right and left, we end up with a total width of this shape of 9 inches. Then we do the same thing. We take our 1 inch frame and put it on the 5 inch picture, both top and bottom, and we end up with a 7 inch height. Now perimeter is the total distance around this. So for a rectangle, perimeter equals length plus width plus the length plus the width again. Combining like terms and doing a little grouping, this is the same as saying that it's L plus W. See, we have one of those here, another one here, times 2. Then we can just substitute in values. P equals 2 times 9 plus 7, which is 2 times 16. Now that 16, just as a side note, is something called the semi-perimeter. Semi meaning half, so this is the distance halfway around the object. There are many situations where that becomes useful. But continuing on, 2 times 16 is 32, so this picture frame and it, the picture inside of it have a total perimeter of 32 inches. Dimensions are going to be very important as we look at perimeter, circumference, area, and then eventually moving on to surface area and volume. So let's take a look at the same concept but for cir for circles the perimeter is called the circumference, but it carries out the same feature. It is the total distance around the outside of the object. The perimeter, or circumference, of a circle can be calculated as pi times the diameter, or, since diameter is 2 times the radius, circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius. So let's calculate the circumferences of these, uh, both in terms of pi and as an approximation using 3.14 as that approximate value of pi. Remember, pi is an irrational number. It's also called transcendental. It is an infinite, non-repeating decimal. So let's begin with doing it exactly in terms of pi. So circumference. Since in this first circle we are given the total diameter, distance all the way across the circle, we're going to use the diameter formula. And we get circumference equals pi times the diameter. Diameter is 12, so this would be 12 pi. Now, doing the decimal approximation of this, c is approximately equal to 12 times that approximate value of pi, 3.14. And calculating that, we get an approximate answer of 37.68.
units again being important, both of these are in terms of centimeters. Now on our right side figure, what the information that they give us is the radius. It only goes from the middle to one edge. So our circumference is going to be 2 pi radius. So we get 2 times pi times 18. So this is just 36 pi feet. Next, we're going to want to know what that is as a decimal approximation. And doing the same thing, C is approximately equal to 36 times the 3.14 value for pi. So that means this is approximately equal to 113 and 4 one hundredths of a foot. So circumference, a little bit of a formula that goes to it. Perimeter is simply the sum of all the sides of a polygon. Now let's take a look at some area. A room is 4 yards by 11 feet and needs to be carpeted. How many square feet of carpet is needed for the room? Well, in order to get this one started, we need to first make everything come out in the same units. So we have 4 yards and we have 11 feet. Since 11 is not a total number or a integer value for yards, let's turn the yards into feet. 4 yards with 3 feet per yard gives us 12 feet. So our area of a rectangle is length times width. So we have 12 feet times 11 feet. 12 times 11 is 132. A foot times a foot, well anything multiplied by itself is called squared, so we get 132 square feet. Now not all shapes are going to be nice and easy like that, so with that we come across the uh, postulate 110. And this one states that the area of a region is the sum of the non-overlapping parts, which means that if we take an irregular shape like the one shown and break it down into pieces, that we can find the area of the pieces and sum them together. So we have a, basically it looks like a staircase, that's 33 feet wide, 33 feet tall, but then has this step-down feature that you see. All segments are congruent. First we need to find out what the length of each segment is. So if the total width is 33 feet and it's broken into three congruent corresponding or three congruent segments, then each one is going to be a third of the total. So we have 11 feet each. And that is true for the height as well since all the sections are broken congruently. So, a couple of ways of going about this. We can simply draw a set of horizontal lines and find the area of those three rectangles. We could also, since it is just a rotation, do the same thing for vertical lines and find those. But if you do both, we end up with all these sections of congruent squares. So what would be the area of any individual square? Well, each square is 11 by 11, or 121 square feet. What we need to know next is how many such rectangle or squares are there. We have 1, 2, 3, four, five, six of them. So what we have is six times 121, which is 726 square feet. So we can break things down into their pieces or parts, find the area of each part, and then put them all back together for the total. 
Now let's look at some circles when it comes to area. And we're going the formula for the area of a circle is similar to that for circumference. Area equals pi times the radius squared. And we'll talk at a later time about how this formula was derived. But here we only use area. We cannot use sorry, we only use radius. We cannot use diameter. So our formula, we're going to do things both exactly in terms of pi again. Uh, area of this first one is pi times the radius squared. They give us the diameter, so to get radius we simply cut it in half. This gives us pi times 6 squared, which is 36 pi centimeters squared. Now using the decimal approximation, area is equal to 36 times 3.14 and carrying out that computation we end up with 113.04 centimeters square approximately not exactly. Next let's do the same procedure for the circle on the right area again is pi r squared so that means it's going to be pi times 18 squared and going through that calculation 18 squared is 324 so this is 324 pi, uh, pi feet squared doing the decimal approximation we would have our area is approximately equal to 324 times 3.14 which that being computed is 1017.36 centimeters squared so in this lesson we looked at perimeter circle version of perimeter called circumference and area got some basic formulas and one new postulate for them make sure you have these ideas down and a few examples copied Make sure you have that postulate and be ready to use them as we move on.